a bat. A fox. A crab. Death. Death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He could still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? I know he's really unhappy. He just can't understand why I seem unable to love him. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I no longer want to live. I have no reason to continue. Not even for your son, Sean. I couldn't save Jason. Sean doesn't need a father like me. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? Have there been any cases of split personality developing after concussion? Like people doing things but having no memory of what they've done. Like somebody else had been doing them. We know that in certain cases, a violent shock to the brain can cause serious psychological disturbances, like schizophrenia, for example. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. Something the matter, Sean. No, I'm all right. Aren't you gonna go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. How did things go at school today? The teacher yelled at me for being late again. She's gonna send me home the next time it happens. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? Do you want to eat something? Sean looks so miserable. I wish I could help him. Just not sure I can right now. What am I going to do to cheer him up? Sean used to love going to the park, laughing and messing around. Man, he was so happy. But that was before, with Jason. Poor Sean. He probably got into trouble at school because of me. We're just not communicating. Feels like we're drifting apart.
I haven't been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! Come on, Dad! Make me fly! <laughs> he seems to be having fun. It's been a long time since I've seen that smile. I'll find something else to do with him. What about that merry-go-round? I bet I can push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it. Great! <laughs> Whoa, I think my head is spinning. <laughs> Good training for astronauts, though. <laughs> He seems to be having fun. It's been a long time since I've seen that smile. You want to go play on the swing? I'll push you. Okay. <laughs> that was cool. It's getting dark. It might start to rain soon. I'll find something else to do with him. Boomerang? You know how to use it? No, 
Not really. I can never make it come back. Can I give it a try? You did it, Dad. Do you want to give it a try? I won't be able to do it. Oh, come on, let's try it together. Now, the main thing is to get the right position at the beginning. Now, you've got to throw it straight and a little to the right. Now, throw it! Good job, Sean. See? That wasn't so hard. Hmm. Looks like rain's coming. I think we better go. Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean, when Jason was still here, sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. Coming. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar.
Sean! 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 Do you think it's going to take long? No, he should be finished soon. I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. I'll cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. 
I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no, it's fine. I just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get him well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press are all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it is none of my business. No, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlie and she'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. I should get Perry's assistant to show me my office. I can't wait to get to work. Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like. We're still a few dollars short. Congratulate Larry on my behalf. I'll be sure to do that, sir. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me. This? This is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay, time to work. Wow, more like a bit cupboard. Well, I wanted a quiet place to work, and it certainly looks like I got it. No time to lose. Gotta get down to work. First, analyze the case files. Step one, change the office.
Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found, which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. Killer's car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between 9 and 13. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later. Drowned. In rainwater. Killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly and moved away from his base. Oh, this won't make the geo profiling any easier. Here we go again. I'd rather go wash my face. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. It's all right. I... Here we go again. I'd rather go wash my face.
This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... Five thirty, I think. I'm not really sure. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A beige coat. And a pair of pants. Black pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I went for a short walk around the park just for a few minutes. When I got back, the carousel had stopped and Sean wasn't there. You say you took your son to the park after school, but you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I searched the whole neighborhood for him. I, I thought he couldn't have gone far. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Did they find something? No, nothing yet, but they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they? Do they think it's the origami killer? It, it's still too early to say. But it is a possibility. What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him. I mean, for How hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. It's not what I meant to say. I miss him so much. <laughs> Evening. Good evening to you, sir. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. 
My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. The killer has kidnapped another victim. A ten-year-old boy. Like your son, Risa, I have four days before we find his body on a deserted stretch of wasteland. No one did anything to save my son. Now, you will please to move along, sir. I also lost someone I loved. I know what you're feeling. Then you will understand that I do not wish to talk about it. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out, and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of this door, to the right. Thanks. Goddamn asthma. Can't breathe when it rains. Then he didn't want to talk. Might have known something. Good evening, sir. Are you looking for something in particular? Give me what you got in the register. Don't fucking try anything. Open the register, you dumb fuck. Put the money on the counter. Shit, are you deaf or what? Are you gonna open that fucking register or not? No, sir. You do not have the right to steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You... Hey, you! Come here! I said, come here now! Don't move! Hands up! Put your fucking hands up or I'll shoot! Uh, my name's Scott. What about you? What's your name? Andrew. My name's Andrew. Look, it's not worth it. Put the gun down and just walk away. You giving me advice? I'll give you some fucking advice. So what are you gonna do? Someone could walk in the store any minute and sound the alarm. You haven't got a chance of getting out of this. The first guy to walk in here gets it right in the face. Fuck it, man, you're making me nervous. And when I'm nervous, there's no knowing what I'll do. Don't panic, let's just stay calm. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Uh, we're all just gonna be cool, and everything will be all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool, man. Everything's gonna be all fucking right. You don't really want to shoot anybody, do you? I'm sure we can find a way out of this mess, right? You're not a killer, are you? You just want a few extra dollars, but no blood on your hands. No, I'm not a killer. I ain't no killer. Nice try. For a second there, you almost had me believing all your shit. And now, give me the money. Thousand thank you, sir. I don't know what would have happened if you had not been well, here. At least I didn't come by for nothing. Have a nice day. When my boy, Razor, disappeared, I received a letter with a locker ticket inside. Inside the locker, I found this box. I do not understand what it means, but I think it must be a sort of message from the man who took my son from me. Can I?
Please, take the box if it can be of any use to you at all. It did not help me to save Reza, but maybe it will help you find the other little boy. Mr. Shelby. I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. I can see now that I was wrong. <laughs> 